Hello there, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. I hope you are all doing well. Praying for a whole lot of you. Um, uh, incidentally, um, if you hear in the background <laughs> the, um, the joys of living in an apartment complex, as I am learning, over there we have a... Um, a family of young people who are at the present playing loud hard rock music and then at around 10 30 11 30 at night here our time uh, our neighbors upstairs decide to have a good old wrestling match and you can hear them thumping on the floors late in the evening and a lot of fun <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so if you hear that in the background, that's what that is. Um, very quickly, um, Brother Victor Manjivar, I love you, praying for you. Again, I am concerned for your welfare. If you see this, brother, you can. My email um, is on the channel here. Please get a hold of me. Okay. Um, and again, thank you. <sighs> thank you so much to all of you the church of the living god the body of christ thank you thank you so very much you and i we have talked here or uh, gone through the scriptures here on a couple of videos lately about um the church of the living god the body of christ someone who is truly saved the dangers of living in sin um and what could happen uh, to someone who is living in sin, who does not repent of it, who chooses their sin over the Lord Jesus Christ. We've looked at contra uh, consequences, um, the dangers of complaining. Uh, we have also verified that, yes, today, if you are truly saved and born again of the church of the living God, you are eternally secure. Okay, we have looked at that. Uh, we have also looked at uh, the, the battle against sin. We've looked at many things that pertain to you and I, the Church of the Living God, if we um, give ourselves over to sin. Okay? We've looked at that. Okay? But today, brethren, we're going to look at the flip side. We are going to look through the scriptures and get your uh, authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, we are going to look at the opposite end of that. The lost. The phony. The fake. And the coadjutors. We're going to examine that now. And also we are going to, towards the end of this video, we are going to look into the scriptures to see what you, the vile, unrepentant, murderous, vicious culprits who say that you are Christians, but you are the farthest thing from. Hmm. Well, when you think of what a Christian is, and uh, as far as Catholicism is, yeah, you fakes are just right up there, aren't you? But we're going to be looking at this today, okay? Um, there's going to be a lot of scripture in this video. And I know that a lot of you fakes uh, can't handle a lot of scripture. So, bye 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 bye. Bye bye. It's your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, okay? We're going to do a combination of studying of scripture but also looking up two words within the scriptures and we're going to define these within the context of scripture okay number one we are going to look at what is an antichrist what is an antichrist what does antichrist mean now you could for yourself for your own self go ahead and look in the uh Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which is wonderful. Um, that's a very good resource. 
it's not necessary, but it is a very good resource for you to use. But let's look in the scriptures. To be Antichrist, um, basically there are two aspects to it. One is to be against Christ, and the other is to what? Replace Christ. Okay? To be against and to replace. All right? To be against Christ. Go in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. You know exactly what this is about um, if you watched any of my videos, okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, okay? Now, we are going to see the against, an example of being against Antichrist, okay? The word Antichrist itself appears five times within the authorized version of the scriptures, and five is the number of death, okay? So, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. And of course, you are expected to follow me along in the scriptures as we go through this, okay? We got a lot to go through today. I hope you can handle it. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Serpent. Who was the serpent? The devil. The, that old serpent. Satan. Okay? The serpent here is Satan. And you also see which the Lord God had made. Satan is a created being. Okay? We need to remember that. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Yea, hath God said. The beginning, the genesis of everything that is false. Yea, hath God said. Textual criticism. Yea, hath God said. Easy believism. Yea, hath God said. Okay. <laughs> Catholicism, <laughs> of course. Yea, hath God said. Okay. Everything that is false traces back to its genesis right here. Yea, hath God said. Okay. Satan is questioning God's word. Okay. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now you go right ahead and you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay? The Lord never said, neither shall ye touch it. Okay? He never said that. Eve added that in there. Okay? Keep that in mind. And right here, verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Were their eyes not open? Yes, because they knew that they were naked. Okay? And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They became aware of sin. Okay? They became aware of sin. And in this disobedience, because in this dispensation in the Garden of Eden, it was works, okay, because they could see the Lord 
in the garden. Okay, they could see him. Okay, so it was works. There was no faith involved in the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation of the Bible. <laughs> Find it for me. Please go ahead and put your verses down there, okay? Um, it was not faith. It was works, okay? And in verse 4, ye shall not surely die. Both Eve and Adam, they thought that they would die like that. No, over a long period of time, they died. But see, the implication is that they thought they would be dropped dead immediately. But they did die, eventually, or else they would still be around, wouldn't they? Uh, no kidding, right? So, you see... Satan questioning God's word. And right here, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and their eyes were, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Against God. Against his word. And clearly lying about what God hath said. Being against God. Okay? Anti-Christ. Okay? Anti. Against. Okay? You see that? But also in verse 5, you see another aspect of what it is to be an antichrist. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the other aspect is replacing. Because, and ye shall be as gods, you're your own god. Right? You get to decide what's right or wrong. You get to choose. Nobody's going to tell you what to do, especially not a book. Right? Right? Isaiah chapter 14. Now, these are verses of Scripture that you need to have memorized at the very least. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, at least know where to find them. And Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 17, okay? Isaiah chapter 14. Now, we've gone over these scriptures before. Yes, we have. But for the sake of this video, we are going through these again, okay, to establish that to be antichrist is both to be against Christ but seeking to replace Christ. Okay? Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 17. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will, five, be like the most high. Yet, Thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Note this, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? The Antichrist the man himself, son of perdition. Oh, we're going to get into that. Um, the son of perdition. He's going to make the earth tremble because he's going to be claiming to be God manifest in the flesh. Okay? He is going to, I believe, look like the Roman Catholic depiction of Jesus. Okay? So, yeah, he's going to um, 
make the earth tremble, and he's definitely going to shake the kingdoms. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, uh, and that opened not the house of his prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. Totally clear, wonderful depiction of who Satan is, and also of the Antichrist. To replace. He's against Christ, and he seeks to replace Christ. The vicar of Christ. The Pope. Okay? The vicar of Christ. Another Christ. Every Catholic priest is taught that they are another Christ. In all the catechisms you will look into, they say that the priest takes the place of Christ. That is exactly what the Catholics teach. Okay? Are you with me so far? Yes? Okay. Now, go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Okay? Here, let me get that down there. Uh, Daniel chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. And also, verses 23 on to verse 25, in Daniel chapter 8. And in the latter time of, the, of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, <laughs> and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. It's not the church of the living God. The church of the living God is caught up before the Antichrist is revealed. Okay? The holy people there are the who? The Jews. Okay? Let's continue. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper. Uh, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his land. I have craft circled in uh, this set of scriptures, my Cambridge here, because um, Masons seek to master their craft. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince, capital P, of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. This is the Antichrist himself that this is talking about. The man, the actual son of perdition. Okay? That's who this is talking about. Okay? He's going to come into the rebuilt temple and say, I'm God. And he's going to look, I totally believe this, exactly like the Roman Catholic depiction of Jesus. He's going to look exactly like that. Okay? So we see that to be Antichrist is to what? To be against Christ, yes, but also seek to replace Christ. Catholicism is nothing more than replacement theology and is against Christ. Catholicism is anti-Christ. Look at the Jesuits and look at the sons of Loyola, especially here on YouTube. Murderous, vicious, adolescent, childlike culprits. 
Okay? That's what they are. Antichrists. Okay? Do, do you see this so far? Okay? Yes? Good. Okay. Now, let's go into the scriptures and look at the five times that the word Antichrist shows up. And very interesting for us to note that the word Antichrist appears in the book of John, in 1st John, okay? 1st and 2nd John. Very interesting to note that. Alright, so let's go to 1st John chapter 2. Come on, work with me, fingers. 1st John chapter 2. 1st John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 22, okay? 1st John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 22. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, singular, even now are there many antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. Um, when you read 1 John in its entirety, um, you're, you're supposed to know something as a church of the living God. Okay, you're definitely supposed to know something. Okay, let's continue. They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, capital H, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Okay? Look at verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You despicable, filthy, unrepentant, repentless, unrepentable <laughs> infiltrators. Okay? Who pretended to be of us. But ain't, other, but ain't of us whatsoever. Okay? Go to John chapter 6. Okay, hold your place here. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 60 on to verse 71. Okay? John chapter 6, verses 60 on to verse 71. Um, backstory. Okay? Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is um, debunking the Eucharist, okay? Simply put, okay, he's, he's about to debunk the Eucharist. <laughs> That's all there is to it, okay? Because this is where the Catholic John chapter 6 goes to verify and prove their satanic little um, perfectly round bale shaped sun-shaped cookie and say that's the actual body of Christ <laughs> okay and here our Lord is uh, debunking it rebuking it okay but I want you to notice something so John chapter 6 verses 60 on to verse 71 many therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said this is an hard saying who can hear it when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if 
ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Lower cases. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are, lower case s, spirit, and they are life. The words. Not a perfectly round, bale, sun-shaped cookie. Okay? Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. You thinking about what we just read in First John, about how they were they went out from us, but they were all not of us. Hey, okay, oh, hold hold up. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, "Will ye also go away?" Then Shimon Peter answered him, "Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art." that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's read verses 18 and 19. Okay. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, twice in the same verse, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Looking back at John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71, Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Okay? Now, go to Luke. Go to Luke, chapter 22. Luke, chapter 22. One of them was a devil, Judas Iscariot. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued for they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Luke chapter 22, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew uh, now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then A entered Satan. Then A entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. 
Now, I want you to think about something, brethren. These fakes who come in, who pretend that they are of us, and they never was, were of us. Never. Okay? Not for the slightest. They could put on a good act, but ye shall know them by their fruits. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Verse 4 and 5. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Goes and communes with the enemy. How he might betray him onto them. Okay? How to make the body of Christ, the church of the living God, look bad. By worming their way in, gaining the confidence of some of the brethren and even sisters. So they can use that as leverage against the body of Christ in a moment of their weakness. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. Don't the enemies here on YouTube just salivate when someone uh, is found out that they are fake? They go to them trying to hit them up for information, don't they? Don't they? Don't they? So they can find every little jot and tittle, speck and stone to cast into the teeth of the church of the living God, right? Absolutely. And look at verse 6. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him onto them in the absence of the multitude. Oh, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, just, I, I want to hear what they got to say. There's nothing wrong with hearing what they got to say, right? Oh, God bless. I love you, brother. You know, that kind of thing. And in verse 5, and they were glad and covenanted, and covenanted to give him money. Acceptance, praises of men, some might actually be being paid by these coadjutors for their information, as far as we know, right? John chapter 13, John chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 2. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Shimon's son, to betray him. Judas was part of the twelve, but he wasn't part of the twelve. He was numbered of them, but he wasn't of them. And for his own personal advantage, he betrayed God. Sound familiar? Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 on to verse 50. Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 on to verse 50. This is interesting. This is in the garden. Okay, Judas already... Uh, Satan put it into his heart, okay, to go betray the Lord. And he brought a whole bunch of guys to betray him, to uh, take him captive, okay? Check this out. Verses 47 on to verse 50 in Matthew chapter 26. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude, with swords and staves, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Yeah, these traitors to our Lord, who betray us, who betray the Lord, they were never of us. They were never saved. They go to Satan, and they come back against us with all these little petty little swords and staffs, don't they? Yeah, they can do a lot of damage, but they ain't going to kill you. 
Some of, a, some of them would. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's continue. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, Wherefore art thou come? Then they took him. Then, then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Friend. Called him a friend. <laughs> and that friend was never part, was not of them. He was numbered among them, but he was never of them. <laughs> you gotta love that delicious little irony, don't you? <laughs> you murderous, vicious, despicable, sociopathic, obsessive, narcissistic, adolescent, murderous culprit. <laughs> you gotta love that one, don't you? All you fakes out there. Yeah. Yeah. People will, might say, well, okay, if the Lord knew why, and knew that, G, that Judas was going to do this, and the gospel of uh, Judas or whatever it is, these apocrypha kind of things, these hidden wisdom kind of things, come up with all kinds of rationale about this and they say that uh, it was actually a secret plot between Judas and Jesus. Um, no, to be quite honest with you, brethren, I think the Lord went through that to give us the example that, hey, if they have persecuted him, they're going to persecute you and me. And if one of his own that he chose would betray him, they're going to betray you and they're going to betray me. That's seriously why I think the Lord allowed that. What were they going to do to the Lord anyway? Right? That is just my opinion, and I leave that open to um, debate with you, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. But that is just my opinion. Because when you go back to 1 John chapter 2, Verse 19, they went out from us as Judas Iscariot. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now, Go now in the uh, for about uh, bleh, beg your pardon. In the book of First John, go to First John chapter four. Now I have a very detailed expository study video on First John chapter one verses six on uh, from verse one on to verse six. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, watch that. I'm going to link it in this video. There was a time when I taught that someone who could confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that that was a smoking gun proof text or proof test to their salvation. It is not. It is not. The context is talking about those who preach, who teach. I have a whole video on that. Okay, I have a whole video on that, explaining that, and I am going to link it in this video. I was in error in that, and the Lord corrected me through the scriptures, and also through the brethren, and I made a public video where I publicly confessed and repented of that, and here we are today, okay? Here we are today. But... 1 John chapter 1, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, does not prove 
that someone is truly saved. You know what? You adolescent, vile, vomitous land mass. You can go ahead and look in your mirror there, your little crack mirror, and say as many times as you want, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. You could say that until you're sharp truce in the face. It proves nothing. It proves nothing. You shall know them by their fruits. You can go ahead and say that all day. <laughs> you are known by your fruits and by the level of your deception. And the fact, vicious, murderous culprit, and the fact given that um, if given the opportunity, you'd kill me in a heartbeat. You would. You would kill me just like that if you had the chance. Sending information about me around in my locality? <laughs> that's, uh, I'm not surprised, but it, wow. That's pretty, yeah. Yeah, and you want us to be saved so we can be just as good a Christian like yourself, right? <laughs> Beg your pardon, brethren, sister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give you a bottle of booze, a car, and a baseball bat. I'd be a dead man before I could count ten. Let's read this. First John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and, over, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We, church of the living God, are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Antichrist. Okay? You're an antichrist. Those of you infiltrators and fakes, you're antichrists. You're against Christ and you seek to replace Christ. How so? Just believe. You're uh, trying to replace yourself for the man, Christ Jesus, because your salvation is dependent on your belief, not on a person, spirit, soul, and body. God manifests in the flesh. Okay? Now, very quickly, just to kind of refresh on this, Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, okay? You go ahead and confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord all day and all night. You juvenile. Recess is over. Okay, go have your milk and cookies and go suck your little thumb. Okay? Ooh. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I know you would kill me if you had the chance. Uh, 
Good thing you don't have a car and a baseball bat, huh? So, John chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. <laughs> A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can, a, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Because um, lost people can easily say that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Lost people can have decent testimonies. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, where God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be ruling and reigning when he come back at the second coming for the millennial kingdom, okay? You, you should know that by heart, okay? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, he knows my heart. He sure does know your heart. He sure does know your heart. Second Corinthians now. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They can put on a big smile here on YouTube, but when you have the opportunity, when they're by themselves, the facade comes off. Uh, look, even though, even you, my enemies out there, who have had the chance to speak with me personally, and uh, you, my brethren, you know that the person whom you are seeing here right now, who is speaking on to you, is the one you're going to get in the Skype. Is the one that you're going to get over the telephone. It's the one you're going to get through the email. Okay? What you see is what you get. Okay? What you see is what you get. Alright? You know that. Even my enemies 
well, they, they don't have an honest bone in their body unless they're in physical pain, like children, because they are children. But um, even they would have to be. It's like, yeah, he, he's, go ahead. Yeah, he's still that annoying guy or hard to listen to guy, even in person. Yes, what you see is what you get. Okay. But with a lot of these guys, these fakes, these infiltrators, these coadjutors, these Jesuits, it's a facade that they put on, that they put off. Especially if you give them a little wine or something like that, and then they let stuff slip. Not that you give them to them, but you know what I'm saying. They go ahead and have a little of the, the wine there. And yeah, I, I drink an occasional glass of wine myself. I, I do. I've uh, told that to many of you. Absolutely. I don't get schnuckered off of it or drunk, but I will drink some wine here and there, you know, especially when you have a good pot, a, a plate of pasta. Very good. Never mind. Sorry about that. Okay. And verses 19 on to verse 20 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 19 and 20. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. You put up with fools. What is a fool? The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Okay? Got to be careful who you're listening to and who you're giving entertaining you know, who you're entertaining by listening to what they are saying. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exact, exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, you're putting up with it. Why? Why are you going to people who you know are false? Why are you going to people when you sit there or you have earbuds in trying to listen to them? It's like, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there's, there's something not right there. There ain't something right there. Sin, sin, pretty much. He's saying the right things. But there's something there. Again, any of you who have talked to me outside of this uh, by Skype or by phone or even by email, you know the person whom you're who is talking to you now is the person who you will be talking to later. Okay, you know that. Okay, you know that. But with a lot of these fakes, who could put on the false front of being gentleman, calm, and cool? I bet you if, uh, if your life wasn't attached to your computer right now, I bet you are so mad that you'll pick that thing up and throw it against the wall and put, uh, and pronouncing a hundred million uh, anathemas upon me, right? Yeah. Now go to Galatians. Now go to Galatians. We're reading these because we are seeing that there are those who can play a really good game, who can say the right things, who can easily say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. And they can say all the right things. But it's a facade, a false front. When underneath, their true colors come out. Just because you can say it a million times a day, you sad, sad individual, it means nothing. Deception. Lying, sending out information in a country that's not even your own. I, I, I think you need to put those things on your head and get some shock therapy. I really do. I really do. I really do. 
I really, really do. Okay. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 onto verse 6. Okay? Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 onto verse 6. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of those who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Added nothing to me false brethren and if you're under and if you are under this deception saying that in order to prove you are saved you have to say seven words but yet the testimony is easy believism <laughs> as defined and the fruit outside of the uh, facade is rotten um, stinks of putrefaction, uh, rancid. Yeah. 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 It takes time, brethren, sisters, in order to weed out those who are false. Also, it takes, Lord, if this so-and-so is fake, show me. And you know what works? And what helps um, after the fact, like um, when I've be, been become aware of people who are totally fake and evil, um, looking back in retrospect, all the red flags which you ignored, which I ignored, hi, um, like, remember that, remember that, remember that. Oh. The longer you walk with our Lord there, friends, the more you will appreciate retrospect, looking back. While we are in Galatians chapter 5, one verse, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 15. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Beware of men pleasers. Beware of people who are trying to get buddy buddy with uh, certain crowds. Okay? Beware of men pleasers. Beware of people who are not afraid to speak what the Lord will have them to speak, but will speak unto you smooth words, prophesy to sins, get us out of the way. Where is that? You two little guys, huh? Verse 13, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a changed life that comes after salvation. Okay, your life going to change. Okay, some things happen just like that. Some things take time. The Lord's got to beat them out of you. Okay, but your life is going to change. That is inevitable. If there is no change, then you're not saved. And if you are saved, and yet there's, uh, you're resisting the Holy Ghost, okay, where's the chastisement? Where's the correction? 
consequences? Hmm? Where's the conviction? Unfortunately, those of you of the Church of the Living God, I, who willfully gave yourself over to your lust and sin, you of the Church of the Living God, you know that you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within you. And you know what it's like when the Lord brings that weight of guilt upon you, that weight of conviction upon you. You can't even, it smothers you that you can't even breathe. And if you get so bad, the Lord could just very well kill you. Already, God, we've already discussed that in several previous videos, so we're not going to get into it now. But those who are false, who revel in their flesh. Look at this, okay? Look at this. Verse 13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Look at these guys who are easy believism heretics. Okay? When someone... Um, is outed as false, fake, not saved. They run over to this side, okay? And those that are already over there glory in the fact that they came over there and what? But that they may glory in your flesh while they themselves, while they themselves, you get it? Have you not seen that? I have. Have you not seen that? And the Church of the Living God? But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. First John, chapter 2 again. First John, chapter 2. Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You can say the right things. You can confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh till your chartreuse in the face. Say it a million times a day. But if you're lost, and lost people can say that, it means nothing. Are you trying to convince yourself? I don't. I, I, I don't think you are. I don't think you are. But whatever. Whatever. The context. You have to remember the context of First John four verses one through three. Okay. But now. The final appearance of Antichrist, the fifth time, Second John, Second John, Second John, Second John, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and what is truth? Jesus Christ, he is the truth. Okay? Sanctify them through thy, tru thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Now, let's continue. Okay? For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever, sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in the truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, 
that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Um, okay, you immature, uh, adolescent, vile murderer. Um, you, see, you look at verse 7. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. Who confess not. Uh, it's defined by verse 9, you twit. But you wouldn't know that because you're spiritually dead. You're dead in your trespasses and sins. You can't teach. You are incapable of teaching. All of you, all of you who make attack videos, which is your <laughs> ministry, that's all you do. You, it, you are incapable of teaching. You can't. The only thing that you can somewhat teach is heresy, according to the doctrines of your mother. Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism. But see, right here, okay? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God, the doctrine of Christ. Mm. See, verse 9 explains verse 7. Wrong again, of course. Let's continue. Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Have nothing to do with them. Don't comment on their channels. Stay away from them. Don't name them. Because that's what they want. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Oh, get a load of that one. You are the company you keep, they say. Remember? Doesn't mean it doesn't mean it'll cost you your salvation, no. But their filth will rub off on you. Brethren, see. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. So we see, we looked at all the verses that Antichrist is in the scriptures. Okay? Okay? Who hath not the doctrine of Christ? Okay? They came out from us. But they were not of us, okay? Against and to replace? Yeah. Yes. You see, these people are antichrists, brethren. That's all they are. Don't entertain them. There are some of you out there who will name them. I, I will not. I'm beyond that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. There are those of you who already know to who I'm referring, and that's as far as we're going to go. You shall know them by their fruits, brethren. And a big, big thing is if they make a video 
and they're one way here, and a total Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, when you're talking to them personally, that's a big, you know, yeah, people have bad days. Yes, yes, but if it's a constant. Wash your hands of them. Uh, beg your pardon, brethren, these glasses are one second. All right. Now I got glasses there, I'm going to keep falling down my face. Now we're going to look at another word here. We are going to kind of look at the word perdition, okay? Perdition. Turn in the scriptures to John chapter 13. Going to see something here. John chapter 13. John chapter 13 now, verses 13 on to verse 30. Okay? Now we have seen... Uh, in the scriptures about the Antichrist, okay? There's a man coming who's going to be the Antichrist, and there are many Antichrists out there right now, many of them, many of them, and ye shall know them by their fruits, okay? They were not of us. They came out from us, but they were not of us, okay? John chapter 13, verses 13 on to verse 30. John chapter 13 verses thir uh, John chapter 13 verses 13 on verse 30 Ye call me master and lord and ye say well for so I am circle it If I then your lord and master have washed your feet ye also ought to wash one another's feet for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you again an example why Judas Iscariot was of the twelve for we can learn from that example that there were people that we thought were of us but they were not of us let's continue verily verily I say unto you the servant is not greater than his Lord neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now the chosen thing right there, he's referring to is specifically, uh, specifically to those apostles. This is not that election of Calvinism. That's heresy. Okay, that this guy's going to hell, this guy's going to heaven, and there ain't nothing they can do. That's heresy. Okay, absolute heresy. But let's continue. Now I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Who is that? That Jesus Christ is God the Father. I am he. Unless you believe, unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Huh? Let's continue. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Okay? Because Jesus Christ is God the Father. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop, S-O-P, when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest. Do quickly. Sop. 
Notice in verse 26 on to verse seven, uh, 27, Sop appears three times. Sop, a little piece, morsel of bread. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Then he, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Sop, son of perdition, the traitor. One of them was a devil. They were of us, but they weren't really of us at all. And now, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Verses 1. On to verse 17. This is, by the way, truly, the Lord's Prayer. These words spake Jesus, and lift up his eyes to heaven. And said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father... Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Man manifested thy name. What name is that? Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves, the anointed one. Jehovah saves, Jesus. Christ, anointed one. Jesus Christ. Okay? For there is none other name given among men under heaven by, where, by whom we must be saved. Now they have known that all now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all, all and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am. Circle that. Okay? And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. And the Catholics blasphemy, blasphemously take this and attribute that to Francis. Yeah, blasphemy. Keep through thine own name. What name is that? Keep, uh, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And it doesn't say anything in essence. One and the same. Jesus Christ is God the Father. The soul, the soul of the Godhead. The soul is the Father. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. The Word made flesh. Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. Okay. Spirit, soul, and body. Very easy to get. Let's continue, okay? While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. 
Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. See the correlation between Sop and son of perdition? A lot of you already know about this, but there are some of you who are babes who do not. Okay, so bear with me. Okay? That the scriptures, that the scripture, excuse me, might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. They are of the world. We are not of the world, brethren, sisters. That's why they hate us. They say that they believe the scriptures, but they do not. They hate us because we are truly of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within you. That's why they hate you. Rejoice and be glad, because your name is cast out for the Son of Man's sake. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I am not of the world. I am not of the world. Sarkalet. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And all are lost, and none are lost, excuse me, but the son of perdition. Son of perdition. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That dividing line. And it's as plain as the big nose on my face. Now, Second Thessalonians, chapter 2. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Can you handle this? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, lowercase s, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, like the fake Bibles. <laughs> As that the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Nobody wants to hear truth. That division, okay, that division that we just looked at, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay? The falling away. The fakes are falling away. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? They that say we're Christians, but they ain't. Well, I guess in a sense they are, just like Catholics are Christians, right? They say they want to believe that they are of the Church of the Living God. And they're not. They're falling away and being exposed for what they truly are. 
that of us. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Fake people getting out of there. People not wanting to hear truth. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, anybody? Hello. Okay. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And as we have already looked, Satan went into Judas Iscariot. A foreshadowing that the Antichrist, the man, is going to have Satan within him. It's going to be Satan manifest in the flesh. Against God and replacing God, I will be like the Most High. Let's continue. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember what we read in Daniel. Okay? Remember that? Yes. And the temple, the rebuilt temple. He's going to be a pope. That's why he has no desire for women. He's not, it's not that he's going to be a sodomite. Okay? He's going to be a pope. And you can arrive at that by reading who Mystery Babylon is. Okay? May he be a sodomite? Don't know. Don't care. But I believe where it says that he shall have no desire for women or shall not desire women, it's because he's going to be a celibate Catholic pope. Let's continue. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Only he, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, God, our God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who now letteth will let, until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. We're the body of Christ. We have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit living within us. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? We are the hindering. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, is hindering the Antichrist to his body, the Church of the Living God, until he be taken out of the way. And then, I've covered this before, but have to, and then shall that wicked, capital W, be revealed. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. You, you think you're going to, the Antichrist is going to be revealed while the body of Christ is down here? No. Can you not see? And then, circle that. Okay? Get, I don't have a pen up here. Oh, 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 wait. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Get, okay. Get yourself a pen. Circle that. Okay? And then, don't Ever let anyone try to tell you that we're going to see the Antichrist first before we get caught up. I don't think so. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Hi. And I know that irritates you. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Consider amongst 
truly saved, born again, Church of the Living God. Wow. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. An example, saying Jesus Christ is come in the flesh a million times a day to yourself and trying to convince others that you are of the church of the living God. No, you're a mere Christian, just like uh, your order. You know, the Jesuits, they're Christians too. I'm of the church of the living God. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the capital S spirit and belief of the truth. What comes first? Spirit and belief, grace, through faith, and that's capital S, signifying the Lord himself. Let's continue. Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Whether you heard about the doctrines or by our epistle. And now we have the, the complete set of scriptures uh, in front of us that God has chosen that went through a seven purification process. Me and uh, Brother Alexander Hartley were talking about that today. Uh, who Brother Alexander Hartley did help me out quite a bit with this. So let's continue. Okay. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, one and the same, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Good word and work. Not putrid. Not rank, not deceptive. But look here, look here, okay, at verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And verse 11 and 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Go to Second Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 2. I did a whole... Uh, expository video on this as well. Might decide to link it in this as well, okay? Come on, fingers, work with me. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 15. Look, there comes a point when someone is beyond, beyond getting saved because they have made their choice. Not that the Lord can't save them or won't save them, they have made their choice, and they have been given over to that. There are those out there who are gone, who will not be saved. Those who can sit amongst saved, born-again, King James Scripture-believing, Church of the Living God, and eventually be revealed to be a Jesuit, infiltrator and vile and rancid and rank that brethren that's somebody who is gone past the point of no return it would be great to see people like that get saved because if they did imagine what damage 
they could do if the Lord were to use them to cause havoc on the devil himself. But no, they can't control themselves. They have no rule over their own spirits. Temper, uh, someone who cannot control their temper is one of the biggest weaknesses a man or a woman can have. Think about that, brethren. If you're of chloric temper, um, you got a really big weakness. Oh, granted, wouldn't want to stand in the way of that hurricane or hurricane uh, of that temper. Granted, yeah, but it's a weakness nonetheless. Remember that. Remember that, brethren. But there are there are people who are gone. I don't believe in wasted prayer. But, brethren, brethren, come on, sisters, I, I, you don't want to hear this. You are wasting some of your prayers for people who have already made their choice. And if you don't know, if the Lord hasn't revealed it to you, fine. But there are those out there, and many of you, my brothers and even sisters, can attest to this. There are those out there who, beyond a shadow of a doubt, have gone past that point of no return. They're damned. All they have to do is die. And that is sad. That is. But like I always tell you, is God holding a gun to your head? No. Is Satan, Satan, <laughs> holding a gun to your head? No. That's going to be really hard to correct there, brother, so please have mercy on me on that, okay? <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord for all of you who look at things in an analytic, analytical fashion. Gotta love you. Okay, Second Peter chapter two, verses twelve on to verse fifteen. But these, as natural brute beasts, made not Calvinistic, made by their own choice, made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of things that they understand not. See, that they understand not, because they are natural beasts. Natural. Unregenerate. It's not that Calvinistic hui where they're unelect. That's nonsense. That's heresy. That could be debunked just like that. Okay? That's hogwash. Okay? That's that stupid. Okay? By their own doing. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. As they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings. While they feast with you. Let that roll around in your head a little bit. Look at that verse. Let's, let's read that again. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. You're getting what's coming to you, buddy. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Woe to you who lie so much and you believe your own lie. May God have mercy on you and take you out quickly. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. You don't even try. You don't even try. Only for as long as as to make a video, only for as long as it is to go outdoors. How are you when it's just you and the Lord? 
Church of the Living God. And you fakes, I'm sure you're making your father, the devil, happy. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart, they have exercised <laughs> spiritual exercises uh, with covetous practices which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Praises of men again, an example of that could be. Jude Jude verse 4 for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 10 on to verse 19. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know Naturally. <laughs> Just being yourself. As brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Macbeth, Shakespeare. Go look it up. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, <laughs> to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever, like hell. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouths speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Having men's person, persons in admiration because of advantage. Beware of a suck-up. I won't compliment you unless it's you know, you know, unless it's of the Lord and you're my brother or sister, you're not going to get a vain compliment out of me. But those who have pers uh, men's persons an advantage to get in, these infiltrators. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Yeah. 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 Brother. When you get to this point, you know who you are. Yeah. Do what the Lord will do. Uh, will have you to do, brother. And we're also going to see in Revelation chapter nine. Revelation chapter nine. 
Now, this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, is caught up. We're out of here. Okay? He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. We're gone. Okay? Look at this. All this stuff is happening. Okay? All this nightmarish stuff, these judgments, the files, and stuff like that. All this stuff is happening. Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 on to verse 21. This is very important to note. When remembering about those of today who have gone past that point of no return. During the time of Jacob's trouble, where eternal security is not there, except if you were one of the 144,000 Jews. Okay? Revelation 9, verses 20 on to verse 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. If people, now granted, this is the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Totally different dispensation, okay? Faith and works. You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No matter what, what what's that guy, Gene Kim, says, you know, you chop that off like John MacArthur chopped that off, or you get the tweezers and, you know, no, 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 you're done, okay? With that in mind, all this stuff they're going through and they still won't repent. And you scoff at the, the idea that there are, are people out there today who have gone past that point of no return. I know of a few of those. So do you. And one more. Revelation 16, Revelation 16, verses 8 on to verse 11. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. Now granted, once someone takes the mark of the beast, they're, they're going to hell anyway. But the point is, brethren, there are people out there today. It's not that God can't save them. They will not get saved. And if you're counting for one of these deathbed confessions, um, I is that likely? I doubt it. Is it possible? With the Lord, anything is possible, yes. But you're going to live your life as a devil, a son of perdition yourself, and what, you think before you croak, you're just going to get right with the Lord? Good luck with that. There are people out there, brethren, we've been looking at it. Someone of the Church of the Living God cannot be indwelt by Satan. Can't do it. Now, go to 1 Timothy. Perdition. Remember? Perdition. Perdition. 1 Timothy. Chapter 6. Not Hebrews. 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3, under verse 21. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, under verse 21. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Now I teach that um, uh, doting about questions and strifes of words uh, could be that people, well, the Greek says, or the Hebrew says, you gotta go to the Greek. But also, these fakes, you can say a sentence and they will pick out the most insignificant word of that sentence and harp that and harp on that one word out of that sentence to take away from the context of what you are trying to say. That is a trick of rhetoric, okay? That is a very um, crafty, subtle, deceptive trick, okay? They will, they will harp on an insignificant word and use that insignificant word to override the context of what you are saying through that sentence, okay? They will harp on the little thing instead of on the broad spectrum of what you are saying. That is a trick of uh, rhetoric, okay? And that is what they do. That is what they do, okay? You can explain the context of a verse, of a passage of scripture, but they will harp on one word, one word, and make and amplify that to override the context which is clearly given you. That's a trick of rhetoric. Okay? Not everybody knows how to do that. Highly trained people do. Devils definitely do. But be aware of that. Be aware of that. And catch that in comments. Catch that. And beware, brethren. Beware. Because whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, and evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of truth, Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. I got clothes, praise the Lord, thank you. Food, praise the Lord, thank you. I have esteemed thy word more than my necessary food. And put ye on Jesus Christ. I was going to do a video on that a while ago, but I've lost the notes. I'll have to redo it again. But just saying. Yes, having food and raiment, literally. Food. The scriptures, raiment being clothed upon by Christ. Not saying, I'm just saying. Let's continue. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give, thee, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King, capital K, of kings, and Lord, capital L, of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power and everlasting, power everlasting, amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science, falsely so called which some professed have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And we see there in verse 9, perdition. Perdition. Son of perdition. In 2 uh, Thessalonians, and, uh, Thessalonians, it was... Um, Verse 3, and 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 3 through 21, it was verse 9. Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews, chapter 10. Verses 26 on to verse 39. Now, this is written for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. This is not for our current dispensation. Uh, there's instruction and in righteousness for us in this, yes. There are things that do cross dispensational lines, but doctrinally, the book of Hebrews is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble specifically. Okay? But we got to read this. Okay? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 on to verse 39. 26 on to verse 39. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye? Shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? For we know, for we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days, in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great flight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in it. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but to them that believe to the saving of the soul. Talk about getting the context, right? 
there again we see partition okay now I inadvertently skipped something I inadvertently skipped something brethren Philippians chapter 1 hold on one second beloved brethren all right <clears throat> now Philippians chapter 1 Oh, uh, beloved brother, um, <laughs> sister, we're going to read this whole chapter for the entire context of this. I hope you can handle this. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all making request with joy. It is a joy to pray for you all. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ when we get caught up. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the in the defense of the and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment judgment judge these people according to the scriptures beloved don't just go off of a confession judgment judge these people according to the scriptures that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense Till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Do you have the fruits of righteousness, you fakes, you infiltrators? Only for a facade that you can put on and take off. Yeah. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. An example? To speak up? To have a little courage? Now, Check this out. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Some will preach the true Christ, the true Jesus Christ of the King James Scriptures to get you in trouble. These fakes, they don't. Because then again, they, uh, they believe that Jesus Christ is one of three and the one in the middle died for me. <laughs> they believe in a trinity <laughs> which is one god of three persons <laughs> hey, yeah yeah and some also of goodwill the one preached Christ of contention not sincerely this guy says, I need to repent of my self-righteousness. That it is by grace through faith, and it's not just believe. You know, that's an example. They'll say, like, he pre he's saying that uh, it is repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That you need to be broken in order that you may be fixed. Okay? That you come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. That's what he's saying. See? These others which skip over brokenness. 
and contrition, right? Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. See, verse 18, Paul's not talking about rejoicing that people are preaching about a false gospel and a false Jesus Christ, who is one of three persons in a satanic trinity. No, that's not what he's talking about. People who will use the truth as a weapon as to afflict you when they actually are talking about the true Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, that's what he's referring to. Not the, uh, the likes of these devils, antichrist fakes. Okay, they're antichrists, brethren. Okay, they're antichrists. Let's continue. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the capitalist spirit of Jesus Christ and, and, and the what? What? The Lord is that spirit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness, as always, so now also, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Amen. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. No one, even though Paul did struggle with pride, no one can accuse the Apostle Paul. Of being selfish and self-centered. Even though he did struggle with pride. Let's continue. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. How you doing on that? Yeah. And whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit and with one mind, stri striving together for the faith of the gospel. And nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. suffer for his sake. Look at verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Which is to them an evident token of perdition. The only ones who can't tell that these fakes are lost are lost people themselves. But those of us who have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within us, sooner or later, we're going to see it. It will be made manifest.
but to you of salvation and that of God. Very quickly, something that is in not, not in my notes, the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrine for the Millennial Kingdom. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and verse 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of our of the and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Have you ever heard that one before? Hello, I have. For this they willingly are ignorant of, dumb on purpose, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day, against the day of the judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Perdition. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day, referencing the Millennial Kingdom. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to belief. <clears throat> hey, Calvinist, put this in your pipe and smoke it but that all should come to repentance. Repentance. That all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons, spiritual and body, ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation long suffering putting up because but that all should come to repentance look at verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance again calvinism blown out of the water right there okay 
the long suffering of the Lord. And there are those of you who have hardened your hearts and are gone past the point of no return. Shame on you. Woe, woe be to you, the wicked people. Verse 15 again. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Again, these people. They can't teach. They don't teach. All they can do is schoolyard little tactics like little children bullies that they are. They can't because they're dead. D-E-E-D. -E -E dead. <laughs> I misspelled that on purpose. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, Beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Careful who you keep company with. Be careful what you listen to. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, we have seen... Antichrist and perdition, okay? Antichrist and perdition. Antichrist is against and replacement, okay? The son of perdition, okay? Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, son of Shimon, okay? Okay? These people are antichrists who have Satan within them, okay? They are, uh, they are destined for perdition, Okay, you could say, they are sons of perdition. I know sons of perdition is not in there, but, okay. Go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. We're going to read this whole thing. I hope you can handle that. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. It doesn't matter what you believe according to Catholicism. Be a Jeho, be a Mormon, be an easy believism heretic, okay? Be a Buddhist, be a Muslim, be a Hare Krishna, be a Branch Davidian, be a Republican, be a Demokami, okay? Be a Trump supporter. Anything but adhering to the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Anything but being of the church of the living God. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast, scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's where these Antichrist spirits stem from, Satan. And his church, Mystery Babylon. Uh, if, uh, those of you of the Church of the Living God who know this, you know who this is about, you babes. And Christ, this is the Catholic Church. 
Look at verse 4. Purple and scarlet decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of, the ab full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. This is Roman Catholicism. Let's continue. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And, I went, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names are not written in the book of life, from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Note that. Note that, okay? Hinge this. That was, and is not, and yet is. Note that. Okay? Note that. It's going to come into play here in a little bit. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, the original... Uh, chair of the Roman Pontiff was um, on the seven hills. Okay, this is talking about Roman Catholicism, the city of seven hills. Okay, this is not talking about America, too, by the way. This is clearly talking about Roman Catholicism, Vatican City, Catholic Church. Okay, and apparently, like I said, the original chair was moved but yet still it abides on seven hills there was even a poem about it apparently okay let's continue and there are seven kings five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven that goeth into perdition And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Look around. Everybody is gravitating to the top of the pyramid. <laughs> Returning to Catholicism through the Jesuit order. Peoples. Multitudes and nations and tongues. How many nations require or, or seek an audience with the poop? With Francis. Let's continue. And the ten horns which thou sawest on the, upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, pre-Vatican II Roman Catholics, <laughs> and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the word of God, words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, Vatican City, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It all stems back to the Vatican, brethren. That's where Satan is. That's his church. And all these antichrists, they're working for Satan. Whose church is Roman Catholicism and his army is the Jesuit order. Do you see? And now, brethren, and to you, wicked antichrists, I'm going to remind you of where you're going. If there are those of you 
that can repent. I hope you do. I hope you do. I'm going to put a salvation video in this in the description box from a preacher of righteousness, Aaron Judge, Aaron Deering Judge. Okay? You need to get saved. But for those of you who have hardened your heart and made your choice and are gone past that point of no return, here's where you're going. Here's where you're going. First, let's go to Matthew. We're almost done. Matthew chapter 26. Verses 31 on to verse 46. Matthew chapter 26. Oh, excuse me, I wrote the wrong one. Matthew chapter 25, <laughs> verses 31 on to verse 36. I wrote that down wrong. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 on to verse 46. Okay? Now, this is referring to a second coming. But for those of you who are beyond the, uh, who have gone past the point of no return, and you're going to hell, and you're trying to get as many people to go down there with you, let, me, let, us, let us remind you of what's awaiting you, you vicious, murderous, culprit scumbag. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as sheep, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he, shall sh and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Separation, division, okay? Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. For I was, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when shall we see thee, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king, capital K, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye have done it unto, unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Now this is talking about when he come back. Okay? That's what this is talking about. Second coming. Okay? But, Check this out. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me. And naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Then look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You're going to a place that is prepared for the devil and his angels. 
everlasting fire. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verses 43, on to verse 50. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Now he's not talking about literal mutilation. If something is causing you to sin for our instruction and in righteousness, cast it away from you. If there's something that's keeping you from the Lord as pertaining to your salvation, if you're on the fence or something like that, okay, put it away from you. Okay, he's not talking about mutilating yourself. Our instruction and in righteousness for the church of the living God, if there's something getting in the way of you and the Lord, get rid of it. And notice, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not quenched. Taken out of the new Bible perversions, most of them. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be ca uh, quenched. Now notice the hand. What are you touching? The feet. Where are you going? Again, he's not talking about mutilation. Get these things away from you. Where their worm dieth not, and their fire and the fire is not quenched. You're not going to die in hell. You're not going to be burnt up. You are going to be burning forever in darkness. This is where you're going. No wonder you want to eat and drink, for tomorrow you die. Because you know where you're going. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. What are you looking at? It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Uh, right there, salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace with have peace one with another. Salt burns, but it also preserves. You're going to hell, which is prepared for the devil and his angels, and the fire is never going to be quenched, and you're never going to die. This is where you're going. Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Go to Luke, I believe it is Luke 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 on to verse 31. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs, which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's Bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. You're in hell, you're going to be able to see us.
And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the t that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. For he said, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, five, the number of death, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Once you get there, Um, like Peter Ruckman said, I sincerely doubt that there's one person in hell that would want even you antichrists to come down there with them. It's so horrible. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Where is Moses and the prophets found? The scriptures. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Oh, I had a dream. I, I went to hell for a half an hour, and I came up, and I'm here to warn you. Now give me a multi-million dollar movie contract and book signings and all stuff. No, no, no. No. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, the scriptures, neither will they per be persuaded the one rose from the dead. Talking about himself there. Revelation chapter 13. If you have made it this long, I know my enemies, they, they probably can't even make it 20 minutes or they see this. They're just going to attack it without even watching the whole thing. But if you make it this long, only the church of the living God would do something like that. Or those of you who are hungry. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 on to verse 18. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And he causeth, not force, causeth all, doesn't force all, causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 
and his number is six hundred three score and six 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 the number of the beast which in ancient hebrew equates to www world wide web For it is the number of a man, six, 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 three numbers. Now, Revelation 14, verses 9 on to 12. Here's what happens if you take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's faith and works. you got to keep the commandments of Jesus. But you cannot do this. Despite what that Gene Kim guy, Robert Breaker, John MacArthur. And the third angel, uh, Revelation 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Remember what we read in Luke chapter 16? And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You take that mark, you're going to hell. They ain't if, no ifs, ands, or buts. Now, finally, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Remember I told you to hinge something in uh, Revelation chapter 17? Remember that? Where was that? <laughs> uh, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Three. And going backwards... To Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, 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 six. Three. Revelation chapter 20. Verses 10 under verse 15. Hey, here's your Trinity. And the devil that deceived them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, ever. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Notice that the beast is mentioned second, and the one in the middle died for you. Here's your trinity. And I saw a great white throne. Now see, the judgment seat of Christ comes first. 
for those who are saved. The great white throne. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books which were written, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. You're going to have to live it. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Twice dead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Guess what there, champ? If you're not written in the book of life, you're going to hell. And I really doubt anyone at the great white throne is going to have their name written in the book of life. This is what awaits you, antichrists. You're going to hell, and you're going to burn forever, and you're never going to die, and you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire, burning forever and ever. And some of you have chosen that. I have no pity for you. I have no pity for you. God can save you, but if you have given yourself over to that and have gone past that point of no return, good luck. Good luck. Anyway, I think, I think that we got, that I made my point to you today, hopefully. <laughs> this was a long video. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brethren, don't be afraid of these antichrists. Don't be afraid of them. You shall know them by their fruits. And, and what does it say in Philippians? chapter 1 verse 28 Philippians chapter 1 verse 28 come on fingers work with me Philippians chapter 1 verse 28 and in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his namesake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. Don't be afraid of these antichrists. And they're popping up more and more and more and more. The closer we get to being called up. Try them, brethren. Judge them according to the scriptures. And beware. Beware of them. Mind your company. Okay? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Almost three hours. Wow. I love you. I'm praying for many of you. Uh, the Lord be glorified through this. That's all that matters. Um, hopefully, hopefully he may be glorified. And if you make it this whole way, God bless you. I love you. Church of the Living God. And we will see you in the next video.